Oh, oh, that, that's an Audi A3 sedan. Possibly the best looking small four-door saloon on the planet. And the particular grey that we've got here is called a 35 TFSI. I'll explain more about that later. And what we're going to do here is we're going to break this video review down into sections. Um, price and features, practicality, driving, safety, eight of them. And for each section we're going to give it a score at a 10. And then using mathematics alone, we're going to give it a final score right at the end. I'm also going to tell you something else right at the end, which might make you take your money and put it back in your pocket and just wait. More on that later. Let's look at the design first. You know how everybody seems to be doing that 10 year challenge internet meme thing at the moment? The one where they post a picture of themselves from 10 years ago and then one from today and you're supposed to tell them how good they still look? Yeah, that one. Uh, I want to do the six year challenge with the Audi A3 sedan because it came out six years ago, it came out in 2013 and in car years, six years is, that's, that's, that's a lifetime. This is the equivalent of an 80 year old person and it's still smoking hot. That's weird. Okay, look, this is what the Audi A3 sedan looked like in 2013 when I first met it and this is it now. Just while we're here, this is what I look like in 2013 before marriage and mortgage and children and this is me now. Yes, sure, there's been some cosmetic surgery, they've changed the lights and the grill and there's a few other tweaks here and there, but it still looks stunning. Now, as I've mentioned before, this is the 35 TFSI and something you should know is that it looks pretty much identical to even the higher grades in the range. Uh, the difference really is the wheels, not, not those wheels. These are optional wheels, they come part of the style package, uh, they're 18 inch wheels. But I love it. It looks like a mini Audi A8. Actually, it is quite small. Uh, looking at the dimensions, it's uh, 4.5 meters long. Now look, guys, I know that you like me to get out there and measure cars with my body, but um, I'm not gonna do it. It's not gonna happen anymore. Yes, it is. <laughs> It's about two meters wide and only 1.4 meters tall. Does that affect practicality? Yes. But this is about design and if you look inside you'll see that even after six years it's still stylish. It feels well put together with a great fit and finish. But that screen which used to make me go whoa when it first came out now makes me go yeah because it looks tiny and it slithers out of a hole. Now that screen, that screen is amazing. It's a 12.3 inch virtual instrument cluster and it's part of the optional Technic package fitted to this car. So, even after all these years, the Audi A3 sedan is still stylishly beautiful. For design, I'm giving it a nine out of 10. Let's talk practicality. I'm gonna be honest with you. This car's too small for me. I'm 191 centimetres tall and I need my space. But it has a pretty good boot, 425 litres. That's bigger than the A3 Sportback. The Sportback is the hatch version of, of this car. Now, what really kills me though, is how low it is to the ground. Just getting my son's child seat into the car and my own son has made me get on my knees. It's been very painful on my back. Let me show you oh, the rear leg room. Oh, okay, so this, this seat is in my driving position. Um, as I said, I'm 191 centimeters tall and um, this is not a very nice place to be. I feel like I'm playing hide and seek and no one's ever gonna find me because I've hidden in a washing machine and it's, it's that cramped. Um, which is also strange because I've just road tested a Volvo XC40. Uh, it's actually shorter than the Audi A3 sedan, um, but it has way more leg and headroom. Um, read the full review, carsguide.com.au. Um, let's get in the front. Oh. 
Okay, up front. Now, look, it's not as bad as the back, but I still do feel a little bit cramped. Look, I feel like I'm in a gift shop and I'm gonna knock something over with my giant elbows and they're gonna enforce the you break it, you pay for it rule and I'm gonna walk out with a scented candle. Now, look, storage, it's not terrific either. There's a tiny center console bin there. You've got pretty, actually pretty good uh, door pockets in the front, small ones in the back. Uh, two cup holders up front. If you want cup holders in the back, you have to pay more for them. Uh, what else is there? 12 volt power outlets. There's one in the front and there's one in the back and a USB port as well. It's only for charging. So for practicality, I'm gonna give it a six. Engine and transmission. The A3 35 TFSI has a 1.4 litre turbo petrol four cylinder engine. There it is there. Now, a little while ago, Audi completely changed the names of all its models. This used to be called the 1.4 TFSI, and then they changed it to the 35 TFSI. What does 35 mean? No one knows. It's just an indication of how much horsepower the engine makes. This makes 110 kilowatts. The 40, which sits above it in the range, makes 140 kilowatts. But still, the 110 is plenty of power. Transmission is a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic. Years ago, these dual-clutches used to be a bit jerky in slow-moving traffic, but not anymore. For engine and transmission, I'm gonna give the 35 TFSI a seven out of 10, because you could always do with more grunt. Right. What's it like to drive? Let's find out. Well, I already know, but I'm gonna show you. Let's go. Now, you know how before when I was complaining about the size of the car and I was saying it was too small for me? Well, look, that small size does work to its advantage in the city where you've got narrow streets and small car parks and you're all competing for space. Uh, the size of this car is perfect for the city. Now I've always loved driving the A3 sedan. Um, from the very first time I drove it, back in 2013, um, I love how nimble it feels, I love how balanced it feels, uh, it feels agile. The steering is really light and really direct and at the same time has a really good feel to it as well. This is a car that's very hard to fault from a driving perspective. Now, this car is fitted with sports suspension. It's an option. Uh, even on a road like this though, this ride is not too firm. Uh, the sports suspension actually improves the handling, uh, but it's still comfortable. Uh, it still keeps the ride composed and compliant. Um, like, here's an example for you. The other day I did something silly. I drove to work with my lunch in the footwell of this car. Um, it was in a bowl, it was sitting there. There is a before shot of it for you, and that is the after shot. Um, I was completely expecting it to be flipped over. Uh, it was the drive to work, I was running late. It's very competitive at that hour of the day, and um, yeah, thanks to that comfortable, compliant ride, uh, it didn't end up all over the floor um, and me having to clean it. So yeah, happy with that. I mentioned earlier that the full name of this car when you check it out in the spec sheet is actually A335 TFSI COD. And so the COD stands for Cylinder On Demand. Uh, basically it deactivates two of the cylinders so you can just run in the other two uh, when you're just coasting along, just when you're cruising. And look, that is excellent for your fuel efficiency. Uh, but still, 110 kilowatts is the output of this vehicle, and it's, it's, it's not massive horsepower, um, but it's just adequate, really. So, the score for driving, I'm gonna give it, out of 10, an eight. That's right, out of the 10. Right, fuel economy. Officially, 
Audi says you should get 4.9 litres per 100 after driving on motorways and country roads and urban streets and that type of thing. 4.9 is hugely fuel efficient. Um, I've been getting, and I'm looking at the trip computer here, 11.9. Now, that's more to do with my driving. Uh, and it's also to do with where I'm driving the car. That's really only been, uh, you know, the commutes to the city in the morning and the daycare drop-offs and all the driving that we've been doing today just in this urban area. So that's what you'll probably see if you just stick to, stick to the city, 11.9 litres per 100. If you spend a bit of time on a motorway, you will see that drop down quite a lot. You'll, you'll get very close to that 4.9 serving suggestion. So for fuel, I'm giving it out of 10 and out of 10. Now, safety. The A335 TFSI has a 5 star ANCAP rating, but that was given to it in 2013 and safety tech has come a long way since then. All A3s that were made from late 2018 come with AEB that can also detect pedestrians. It, it is super safe, but there are some holes in its safety armour. It doesn't have blind spot, you've got to option that. It doesn't have lane keeping assistance, you've got to option that as well. You've also got to pay for adaptive cruise control. My God, I drove a Kia Cerato, $28,000 Kia Cerato the other day, and it came with adaptive cruise control as standard. So, for safety, I'm giving it 7 out of 10. If you want to read the full review, go to carsguide.com.au and hey, look, if you've enjoyed watching this, uh, click like and subscribe. You want it, don't you? Of course you do. Right, price and features. The A335 TFSI lists for $42,300 and for that money, you get that seven inch screen. You get a CD player which is hiding in the glove box. You get dual zone climate control, you get an eight speaker stereo, and you get leather seats. You don't get Apple CarPlay, you don't get Android Auto, and you don't get wireless charging either. You've also got to pay for those LED headlights. They don't come standard with this grade either. But I tell you what, I would sacrifice it all just for one thing, and that's proximity unlocking. Because I'm telling you, when you've got a baby in this arm, and you're shopping in this hand, and you just need to lock the car, it makes it very difficult to get a hand free. So, for price and features, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Ownership. The A335 TFSI comes with a 3 year unlimited kilometre warranty. Sounds good to you? Doesn't sound good to me. Most car makers these days are moving to 5 years. At least there's a servicing plan. But for ownership, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. That warranty could be better. Now the time has come to give the Audi A335 TFSI its final score, but first a quick summary. Design. It looks amazing. Even after six years, it's aged superbly well. It's great to drive and it's really fuel efficient. The not so good things. The safety tech's falling behind, it's not the best value for money, and it's not particularly practical. So, what's the score? Something I need to tell you first. Remember at the start I said you might have to put your wallet away and wait? Well, this is this bit. In about 12 months time, a new generation Audi A3 sedan will be arriving. It's going to have better tech, more room, and better features. My advice is to wait for that car to arrive. In the meantime though, the final score for the Audi A3 35 TFSI is 7.1 out of 10.